I actually do that. Do you ever do that? If it's a quiet <laughs> tube, yeah. you just you, you I adopt try to the surf skiing. it and try yeah. to like counteract bend, bend, bend the, the curves. Ski stands. Surf, surf, surf. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, I do that. We are weird. Tech in general, but web dev specifically, mm. suffers a lot from people creating acronyms and throwing them out there, and then they just develop a life of their own, and suddenly everyone is using AJAX, and nobody knows what it actually stands for, yes. or serverless, or you know all these things. Like, wait, serverless? Yes, no. PWA. <laughs> <laughs> it is a buzzword. It is a buzzword. It is a buzzword. And uh, honestly, we never had a good definition for PWA, so people kind of don't know what they're supposed to do if they want to be a PWA. Yeah. But another thing I've heard recently, and I'm not sure if Netlify people came up with it or if they are just pushing it, but there's a buzzword around the jam stack. Right. And it's a word I've heard, and I couldn't actually tell you what it means. So I, 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 Phil Hawksworth, who works at Netlify, yeah. I've seen him speak about it. And I exactly. feel I've heard you should be offended that I don't know what it stands for. I heard a broadcast as well, and he talked about it, and it was like, so basically, what you're saying is common sense. And, oh. and now I looked into the actual website, and I found it really interesting because it's a good pitch, but I actually don't agree with it in that absolute way as it is presented. Oh, so, so like, I, like Ajax then? Kind of, yeah. So I, I, thought I, just, I copied the, the definitions that they give and the explanation that they give, and how we could just talk about them because right, it's actually right. quite interesting because we have built things. <laughs> in the recent past, yes, and we might have opinions. Okay. So, for context, Netlify, if you haven't used it, is a very is a uh, to give an understatement, it's a static site hoster. Like yes. It hosts your static site, but yeah, it just CDN. integrates really well into your GitHub, and it has like tools for supporting forms and all these little things. And we're big fans. Like it, it integrates really yeah, well. Yeah, not with sponsored. Like, not sponsored. That'd be nice. Why not? Yeah. I, get some... well, I do actually have a Netlify hoodie, so like, you oh, know, I want a hoodie. Counts as being. Really? Dodgy. Uh, so let's start with the head. basics, yeah, I guess. The JAM stack, what does it stand for? So right. it's basically an acronym J, A, and M, and yeah. that's your stack. And J stands for JavaScript. Yes, Big it surprise. Does. Yeah. And basically, what they're saying is like, like um, the J and Ajax. Good. any yeah. dynamic programming during the request response cycle is handled by JavaScript running entirely on the client. This could be any front end framework, library, or even vanilla JavaScript. They make it sound so absurd. Even vanilla JavaScript. No, you no, can, okay, that makes you sense. You can do that now. It's <laughs> absurd, isn't it? Okay. And I'm wondering, like, any dynamic programming during the request response cycle. Oh, so, so, so it could, could stand for not JavaScript? Is that what we're saying? No, but uh, you know, it has to be handled by JavaScript. I'm like, what's the alternative? How yeah. can you handle any dynamic programming? On oh, the, I see, I see. Right? So it's a bit, OK, cool. So it, the one part of the stack right. is using JavaScript. Cool. Then they're saying the A stands for APIs, meaning that oh, all so, server-side so for an acronym. Good. All yeah. server-side processes or database actions are abstracted into reusable APIs accessed over HTTPS, good, with JavaScript. Yeah. And these can be custom-built or leverage third-party services. OK. Sure. So you use APIs. That's something that has been around for a while. I mean, the someone thought of Jam and then thought of what words Maybe. these things could stand for. Anyway, OK. No, Let's I, I'll M try not to be a cynical. Cool. M stands for markup. Uh, yeah. And basically, templated markup should be pre-built at deploy time, usually using a site generator for content science or a build tool for web apps. So as cynical as I am about like the acronym, it's nice that Template markup pre-built at deploy time. That sounds like a really good thing, especially yeah. if you're going to have a server render. Uh, the JavaScript is good. The APIs are definitely a thing. It's, it seems so, OK. Exactly. Seems okay. So I, th I found it interesting because the next section on the website is, when is something not jam? Right. And that's, I think, a really interesting way to phrase like, where do we draw Normally. the line? And so for example, a site built with a server-side CMS like WordPress, Drupal, or Joomla, or Squarespace is not jam. So basically, what they're saying is, is that because they're live generating markup? I guess like well, it side. feels like now that Jam is strictly opposed to server-side rendering. Well, that's a shame. Which I, which I don't necessarily agree with because yeah. it's such a big performance pr primitive for the first visit. And it's it's nice that they're doing static deploy. Yeah. But that's not always possible. Not like, always. No. For example, like, there's this image compressor that we're building. <laughs> um, which is completely static, but there and we have, I think, a pretty good. Static site, but sometimes we will do. I mean, <laughs> it's on so, so how, what they're saying is, in the Netflix sense, it's like instead of building it on the fly, they should they kick off the static site generation process every time the data changes. So for a blog, oh. instead of for WordPress, they generate it on the fly with PHP. Right, request comes in, PHP hits the database, gets the most recent blog post, gives you a list of blog posts. Yeah. They say whenever you publish a new blog post, you kick off your build process and generate a new static site. Scalability issues there. So. That's why, for example, Phil Hogwarts builds uh, a website with a clock that gets pre-built 
a rebuild every second. And I feel like I get it, but That's also. But, but, well, hang, on, I mean, hang on, what was his point with that? I mean, because it, it, it. He said, like, it scales. You can build inside every second, and our <laughs> infrastructure uh, will handle that. And there, they have okay. some advantages that I'm going to talk about. But I feel like uh, I get it, and uh, probably okay. lots of cases will benefit from it, but it shouldn't be. I guess what, they, what we should be saying is the Jamstack might not always be the right choice. Right. It's a very popular yeah. choice right now, especially because it's so well supported. Um, because you can just drop your stuff in a GCS bucket or some storage thing, and it will just work. Yeah, I built a few projects recently that, that fit into this, this bucket, yeah. like, into this definition very easily. The second example they give for something that's not a jam All stack right. website is a single page app that uses isomorphic rendering to build views on the server at runtime, which is an extension of the first thing. It so seems very much like um, they're, very, they're very much against the things that don't run on Netlify's stack. <laughs> it's call, call me cynical. I ironic. <laughs> Um, and the third example is a monolithic server run web app that relies on Ruby, Node, or another backend language. So basically, right. what they're saying is the Jamstack, and I have to say, they're not saying that the Jamstack is the solution to everything. Everybody should enough. be using Jamstack. But I guess they're saying that is not Jam. And that's right. fair to say. Fair and enough. the Jamstack, I guess, has advantages where, like, OK, if you have no dynamically generated websites in your backend, but it's all static at build time, you have an easier time with caching because you can just yes, deploy absolutely. it to a bucket, get it to all the edge servers right away, yes. and no request will ever have to go back to your backend. And that can be a massive speed up. Yes. And if I, I my blog right now is not a Jamstack. Uh, Interesting. It's a uh, Python Django uh, setup. And I, it's on my list of things that I'll never get around to, but it, it would be to rebuild it as something more closely resembling a Jamstack, like something yeah. that would just be built from GitHub and then sort of deployed. Because I, I don't think I'll ever hit the scalability problem with the amount of articles in my blog. I've only posted a couple this year. <laughs> um, and it, it, it feels, I don't want to. My server goes down, so I'm a, my server goes down, and I never know why. It, I, I turn it off and on again. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just used up all the disk space, use it with so for the Linux kernels it doesn't need anymore. And it's the kind of stuff I just don't want to have to deal with ever I know, again. right? Like, so you have yeah. Cloudflare in front, and if your server goes down, people can still read your stuff? Um, for a little bit. It's, okay. it's not long. Um, but yes, the Cloudflare is in front, and that handles like, if, a, if an article I write does become popular. Like, yeah. Cloudflare is taken care of. So I, just to be clear, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Jamstack. I feel like it, mm. it's, it's a good pattern. Um, I just, I guess, what I wanted to see is like it's an alternative, like not just saying this is not jam, but like when is it good to be not jam? Because sometimes it's, I think, it, it is appropriate. I think it must be in that scaling point, right? Maybe, like, yeah. Um, I mean, would they? I, mean, I guess what they're trying to prove is like even a website that publishes multiple news articles a day, like a big newspaper, could I think still BBC, right? Could, BBC could Guardian. still technically be a jam stack where you just rebuild every time a new thing gets published. You would have to. I mean, if you made a change that was going to impact every page, like you change the header, your build system must be really fast. Yeah, it's, and, and that, and that the, probably isn't possible at, at yeah, all. Yeah, not for the not for the amount of articles. Yeah, um, the, the BBC churns out a week. I imagine that's going to be uh, you know a tough. Thing for them to do, so I think that's a case where you want. You, I guess. I guess is the when does the number of visits or number of articles you have change? I, I'm trying to figure out my words here. There must right? be an inflection point in the build time versus how often you deploy. Where it's like at this point, it is not feasible to stay on a jam thing, and I need right. just server side rendering on and, it. And I think there's there's a possibility that for things like the Guardian, BBC, they might have articles that are not going to be, might not be accessed between deploys. Yeah. Because like really old stuff, mm. or will be accessed like much later so after So you the could deploy. optimize your build pattern to get, m to delay the inflection point of staying on Jam, well, I guess. What I think we want is a gradual build process that is yeah. triggered by visits to the website, which is the up uh, this <laughs> not Jam, right? <laughs> it's the server build time. Yeah, it um, is. But, but yeah. the one thing I really like about this is it pushes, if people achieve the Jamstack and we make it a thing, we can just be like, you should be using a Jamstack. We will get more web apps that have an API by default. Because one thing I hate, and it's something that actually our Google products are also not good at, is providing an API yeah. for third party apps to just build something against it and use the data or just give a better UI, show that it could be done differently. All these things I sometimes miss. And this would enforce that there is an API that you can use, because that's what it prescribes yeah. pretty much. Absolutely. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I need you to stand there. Uh, just wait a minute. I, I need to face myself. I know you have to go, but like, it just. <laughs> <laughs> your help. Who is the prettiest of them all? <laughs> <laughs> so this quandary, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs>